Hi everybody, in this first video we want to talk about the Greek concept of agency uh, that Paul emphasized so heavily in the beginning of the book of Galatians. Hopefully you've already seen the other video, the uh, whiteboard video that breaks down those first few verses. So in the Greek, the concept of agency is expressed using three different categories ultimate agency, intermediate agency, and instrumental agency. The two that matter to us here are ultimate and intermediate agency. Ultimate agency reflects the source of the message which one carries. For example, if a person could say, I was sent here by the NFL, that would mean that the NFL is uh, the ultimate source or authority behind the man or the woman's representation. In other words, the person that's claiming that is, if it's true, is there and they are being backed by the NFL. So being sent by the NFL, they're speaking for the NFL. The NFL would be the ultimate authority or source for whatever business they're carrying on. So this is ultimate agency. No middleman, just someone that is empowered to say the NFL sent me here and I have a message for you. You can tell we're in playoff season uh, in football. Intermediate agency reflects the presence of a go-between. For instance, the same person, if the circumstances demanded it, might have to say, I was sent here by Roger Goodell's assistant. Okay, well in that case, uh, it's a demonstration of intermediate agency. This person can't say, that I can speak for the entire NFL. He can't really even say that he's been in touch with Roger Goodell, but what he can say is Roger Goodell's assistant sent me. So there may indeed be uh, all the full backing of the NFL with that, but it's intermediate agency. So a man or a person, a woman or man, who's in that position of being Roger Goodell's assistant, heard a message from the source and they said, go send someone on, your, on our behalf. And the uh, assistant finds that representative and commissions them to go. So it's intermediate agency. Hopefully that makes sense. So in our passage, Paul is saying, I have been sent because I'm an apostle, but not through the ultimate agency of men. Okay, so it wasn't man... Uh, is or a movement of mankind is not the source of Paul's message. So it wasn't men that sent him. And he said, I, I also haven't been sent through any intermediate agency of any particular man. There's no particular man who recruited me to come uh, and told me to come and represent his message or what he says the message of God is or whatever it might be. But rather, I was sent, I'm an apostle, and I have been sent through the intermediate and the ultimate agency of Jesus Christ and God the Father. Now, why we would see it that way is Jesus Christ revealed himself to Paul on the road to Damascus, and he called him and he sent him. But what did he send him to do? He sent him to share his message. Uh, the message of the gospel of God in Jesus Christ. So the source is Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, but through, through Jesus Christ. So the source is God, and the agency is God that, uh, that spoke to Paul. So Paul is trying to say here, it is Jesus himself who sent me. So he's the source, and he's also the agent who has sent me. So in this way, Paul has received God's message, the message he's to convey to others, but he received it from God himself and was commissioned by God himself in Jesus Christ. So Paul would state this truth even more clearly in Galatians 1, 11 and 12, which we'll get to uh, pretty soon here. But that verse says, For I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Now, Paul did not have the luxury of being identified by the church at large as one of the 12 disciples who followed Jesus for three and a half years during his earthly ministry, a fact that he was acutely aware of. And we can tell that when we uh, look at 1 Corinthians 15, beginning verse 3, he said, For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. So while Paul was one was not one of the twelve, he was quick to declare that the message he received through revelation from Jesus Christ during his Damascus Road encounter was to be re, was to be received as the genuine revelation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, as genuine as that which Peter and the twelve received while Christ was on the earth, and particularly. Uh, after his resurrection when he appeared to all of them, as we just read about.